What's going on my fellow friends? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn a terrible lighting setup like this into this or this, making it look more professional. Wait, what's happening? Where did the lights go? For those that are new to my channel, my name is Bennett and I live in Switzerland doing my thing. If you're interested in making good video, well, this is the right place to be. Lighting is one of the most important skill to learn if you want to take your video quality to the next level. Back in California, I met this super cool guy named Rado that also has a YouTube channel called Dirt and Iron, talking all about dirt bikes. Now, he asked me if I could help out with his YouTube studio setup. Well, I said yes, and we went over to his garage to create this new lighting setup. This is how it looked before and after. Big difference, right? Now, it wasn't actually that hard to create that look or that setup. He didn't use expensive light to get that look. It was a simple softbox he used. As for the camera, he uses a Canon ADD with a zoom kit lens. Anyway, it's all about how you light your environment correctly using the different techniques that I will show you in this video. By the way, I will leave a low budget camera recommendation for beginner filmmakers including lights in the video description below that will give you a good start if you plan on creating videos. Now I personally like to work with natural sunlight, especially coming through the window. But on some occasions, it can be a pain in the ass, like on cloudy days when the light constantly changes or it's dark outside. I prefer to use studio lights because I have more control over the environment and can get the look I want. Now let me first show you how I would light myself using natural light. Now, when shooting during daytime, I use the window as my key light. Because of the light coming through the window, it diffuses the light a little bit, making it softer. Depending on the time of day, the light might be too harsh coming through the window, so you want to make sure to use a diffuser that softens the light. Now, it could also be that the intensity of the light is too low, so what I would do is use an artificial daylight source to increase the intensity. I like having contrast to give more shape and depth to my face. So what I do is I use a negative fill, which is the black structure you see, taking away the light, increasing the shadows. Now that is a five in one reflector by Newer and there are a lot of ways to use this to control the light. If I wanted to, I could also fill in the light on the shadow side by bouncing the light back, reducing the shadows. Natural light looks just really nice and it's free to use. So look around in your apartment and find a light source you can work with. Now, if you don't have the option to light your studio base with natural light, that is fine. You can definitely use studio lights, but whenever I can, I try to use natural light because it looks beautiful. Now, if you can afford artificial light, then I highly recommend you get some. I normally use the Aperture 120D with the light dome. A cheaper option would be the newer LED 480 bicolor light that I would recommend that runs on cable, but can also be powered by Sony NP batteries. Bicolor light means that you can set the temperature of the light, either day or tungsten light. Now, the good thing about this LED light is that it won't get hot and you can control the intensity of the light. Now, what's not so good about it is the output level since it's bicolor and uses half of the light bulbs. Now for controlled setups or studio setups, that would just work fine. I also bought a diffuser for it to additionally soften the light. Now let me show you my setup using studio lights instead of natural lights. 
Now when I don't want to use the natural light, I make sure to close the window blind so that it is pitch black inside. I then turn on my key light, making sure to set it to daylight temperature, which is 5,500 Kelvin, because my camera's white balance is manually set that way and I place it around a 45 degree angle towards my face. I keep the light close to my face to get a softer lighting. Remember that the bigger the source of light is, the softer light gets. The soft box helps the light spreading it all over the surface and if you put it even closer to your face, it will get even softer. Now I use the monitor in the background that acts a little bit as a backlight but also function as a practical light, making the background look more interesting and giving it depth. For practical lights, I also use these fairy lights over there. I actually forgot to turn them on. And of course, also these LED stripes with the smart bulb that is connected to Alexa. Now I can change the desired color and always have a different background if I wanted to, but I usually leave it that way. It creates a nice ambient to my video. And this is my usual setup, a key light and practical lights in the background. Now you can also use a base basic three-point lighting setup where besides having a key light you would additionally include a fill light and a backlight uh, making yourself stand out more uh, let me show you how it would look like so there is a backlight up here and a fill light to this side and helps fill the shadows giving my face less contrast and making it look less moody as well now the backlight up here creates a rim around me which helps separate me from the background. Now let me show you how it would look when I turn each light on separately. So this is just with the key light on, this with the fill light, now this with the key light, fill light and backlight. Alexa, turn on studio okay. with the practical lights in the back. It's important to know that you don't have to use the three-point lighting techniques. It's up to you to use the light in creative ways. It's good to start with one light and work your way from there. I would highly recommend focusing on one light and investing in a good one. You don't want to use cheap lights because they usually don't output accurate colors. So that is it guys. Hope you got something out of this. And if you did, please leave a like and let me know in the comment section below what you think of this video. If you want to support this channel, please do so by subscribing to it so that I can create more useful and informative content for you guys. Take care and see you in the next video.